Sits the Sandbox fans on New Look Studio. We're here breaking down draft grades. It's only right. The the two dudes that we talked through the draft process with. We invite Lou and Twan in the building. We invite Lou and Twan in the we building. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, how we feeling? How's the setup? How do we feel about the draft? Love um, them both. Comfortable. Lounging, yeah. Feeling, Swan's gonna feel, fall asleep. Feeling real good over here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, draft grades. We're gonna break down, you know, some teams that we really wanted to reflect on. But before we go in depth, we all have our teams that we're invested yep. in. Pat's pick at three. Giants picked at six. Colts picked different direction than what you wanted, but picked at fifteen, the first yep. defender off the board. Mm-hmm. How are we feeling about that before we jump into our draft grades? I feel better about it than now I the, the more I thought about it and the more I looked at it, I didn't realize that he was the number one pass rusher graded every season he played. Law two? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess his his athletic score was nine point nine five or something and then Turner's was eight point eight or yeah. something. So I mean, I, I'm surprised Dallas fell. I'm glad they got Latu. Would you um, have rather Dallas Turner? No. Okay. No, I wouldn't have. I wanted a corner, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm I'm thoroughly happy with the draft. I can't complain, man. They said they had faith in the secondary they have. Yeah. And they drafted like it, so, you know, we'll see, man. I'm, I'm excited, though. They okay. got a Donnie Mitchell for a steal, too, that way. For late. nothing. Yeah. Absolute steal. I'm Apparently, off-the-field issues are the reason why he fell or something so, like that. But like, I'm not... Yeah, that's what they were they were talking about like mm-hmm. the interview process and they were just like he didn't like seem like as excited or invested in mm-hmm. like yeah. We'll I, yeah. We'll I'm peak. sure being in the same city as Pat McAfee's gonna change his fucking mind when he gets <laughs> to go on that whenever he wants. I think he's solid. I, I did like the Colts draft. Again, I'm with you. I was every mock draft I did, I had them going corner. I was trying to take care of you. I was trying yeah. to take care of you in the mock draft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Overall I think good pick. Latu's good. Um the injury was obviously a little bit scary, but, like, he doesn't yeah. have to come in and, like, be... He can be an immediate impact, but, like, if you need him to sit for a little bit, if he's still a little banged up, like, you can wait because he's still got yeah. Quiddy Pay and, like, DeForest Buckner and all that. Yeah. And they signed a bunch of... Their D-line is beef Ray Quan, now. Beef. Raekwon Davis, right? Yeah. Yep. Raekwon so, Davis. Uh, Ubekman. Yeah. Ukman, whatever his name is. He That's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> um, Tuan. Drake May. Feeling better about it. Yeah. Feeling much better about it. Again, and this isn't like a, oh, Drake May stinks. Like, I, I like Drake May. We talked about through the draft process. As it went along, I was like, dude, I like this kid more and more and more. But I didn't know that I wanted the Pats to go quarterback because I really wanted them to trade out. And I think mm-hmm. that's why I was a little like, I don't know why we did this at first. But when you see six quarterbacks go in the first 12 picks, shout out Mike Scarpa for being the one to text it. He said it perfectly. He's like, I feel 10 times better about it knowing that six quarterbacks went in the first 12 picks. Yeah. If everyone was going to take one, fuck it. We took Drake May. I like it. Um, he needs to sit for at least eight weeks, maybe the whole year. He needs yeah. to sit, learn. We can't put him in a position where he's going to fail because um, that's what we did with Mac, and then everyone wanted to eat him alive. I like Polk. Like, we talked about that. I think he's a different kind of receiver. The separation he needs to work on, the route running, is okay. He still needs to work on it. But address contested position catches. needs. Yeah. Adju- it's a position of need. His contested catches are on the on another level. Yeah. Talent. That's what they need. <clears throat> Talent. And I, I feel like the, the Patriots really brought in a lot of pieces to improve the offensive yeah. side of the ball. And we're going to talk about the Patriots a little bit later. I will say I'm happy the Giants didn't end up going in the quarterback direction. A little concerned that we offered the Patriots two first-round picks to move up three selections to draft yeah. Drake May. Happy that that didn't happen, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited about Malik Neighbors. I did like the the, the Giants draft. Um, I felt like Tyler Newbin is going to be a, a plug-and-play mm-hmm. dude that's going to be part of our secondary. And, and Drew Phillips is probably going to come in and be a nickel dude. I, I do wish that... We kind of addressed a little bit more things in the offensive side of the ball, but we were just talking. Theo Johnson is likely going to come in and split time at the tight end position with Cody Bellinger. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, Washington got some good players. Like, things yeah. are changing in that division. Dallas is, is rebuilding their offensive line to either keep Dak upright or, you know, run the ball successfully mm-hmm. if Zeke does go in there. But want to break down the draft grades I'm excited to, to, you know, really digest all of this. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about a team that I gave my best grade to. I'm talking about an A grade, and you guys can feel free to jump in after about this team and, you know, some other teams that you guys really like through the process. 
So I have to say, you know, in the, the NFC South, the Falcons go Michael Penix. Mm -hmm. Everyone shook because, you know, this was a guy that was questionable to go round one. He ended up going before J.J. McCarthy, and then four picks later, also Bo Nix is yeah. off the board. So within those four picks, it was kind of wild. I think Penix is better than McCarthy, though. If I'm going to be brutally oh, yeah. honest, I think he has the talent to be better than McCarthy. Again, J.J. McCarthy might have the best coach out of everyone to like make him be successful. Easily, yeah. Yeah. If I'm talking sheer talent, dude, I really like Michael Penix. And the ability to sit yeah. behind Kirk and learn is going to be valuable. I think yeah. they're, they're both in scenarios to be like beneficial yeah. and... I think they're just, like, different developments. Like, I really like the fact that Michael mm -hmm. Penix has no pressure at all to go out no. there and play. Yep. Um, and I don't think that Kirk Cousins should feel any type of way about having, like, a dude like that, knowing that you just got $190 yeah. million dollars guaranteed. Yep. Who gives a fuck, right? Yeah, yeah. You got paid, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what I will say about J.J. McCarthy is I feel like schematically he's going to be set up in scenarios for success. Like, I don't think he's going to have to stretch the field extremely dynamically. There's going to be routes that complement each other, and Aaron Jones going there is going to be one of the sneaky better pickups of the entire offseason. So I am really excited to see um, how that breaks down. But why I brought up the, the South, not to bring up Penix specifically, we'll get there, but I thought the Bucs had such a good draft. They and, did. and that's not a team that... I feel like people are really talking about is like, oh my god, mm -hmm. like they utterly impressed. But I just wanted to talk about like some of the picks mm -hmm. and why I gave them an A. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, with Todd Bowles, I felt like everybody thought that they were going to go in the defensive type of perspective, mm -hmm. especially with the lack of defenders being selected. But Graham Barton fell to them, you mm -hmm. know, in the twenties, and I felt like that was a really good selection. Replaced Ryan Jensen. They had some guys yep. leaving a free agency. So Graham Barton can literally play five positions across yeah. that offensive line. Thought that that was a great play, knowing that you lock up a lot of your defenders, you bring back, you know, Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans, things like that. Then second round, you're going at Chris Braswell, who mm -hmm. I had, you know, in mocks going at the back end of one to like yeah. teams like the Ravens and things like that. So anytime, Lou, I, I know you love this too, pass rushes from Alabama, plays from Random. Alabama in general. We'll always take, because that's pro experience, guys, ready day one. Blue chip, guys. Absolutely. Yep. You go Ty Key Smith mm -hmm. at the safety position. And then later on, when you're talking rounds four and five, and you're just trying to throw dots, you get Jalen McMillan at the mm -hmm. wide receiver position. Stunned. If something ever does happen with Chris Godwin, you get a young mm -hmm. guy that can really stretch the field. And Bruce Irving, who they didn't need a running back, but they got a running back anyway to yep. go in there with Rashad White, make sure that offense is staying high key, moving. And I, I just think, you know, a lot of teams going to be talking about the Falcons. This team could very much win that division again yeah. if, if the Falcons can't get to, yeah. to 10 wins. Kirk has no ACL, and as much as I do, I thought Penix, I had Penix at three mm -hmm. or four, actually, before the draft. Just way better than McCarthy, I think, just as a prospect. And then Bo Nix is a, a work in progress, but he's almost 30. <laughs> uh, that's the only Was this a Brandon Whedon? <clears throat> but no, I can definitely see a scenario where Tampa wins that division again, and then Atlanta's like, mm, these guys don't really like Kirk. Yeah. Like, Minnesota was one place to fit in, but he's going to Atlanta, and, like, the cool chains can only get you so much with the teammates. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kirko uh, chains. Yeah. Like, like how, how long till they're like, this, this guy's fucking boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like, no one's going to listen. Like, how long till that happens? Because I think the Penix leash is shorter than people think. Do you? Well, Kirk's leash is shorter than people think. Like, okay. we saw it with the Pats. If Bledsoe was going to get benched for a guy in the sixth round, they're not going to bench a 30-something-year-old a off an ACL injury with the guy they just drafted at eighth, who the team might like more. Like, I think Kirk coming out and being pissed about it is only going to work against him in this year. Dude, they said that on the McAfee podcast while Bill was on there, or the McAfee uh, draft coverage while mm -hmm. Bill was on there. He was and great. they brought that example up. He was fantastic. They bring that <laughs> example up because um, I want to say it was Mad Mel. Was one of the guys on the, on the cast was looking at him and was like, well, like, what do you do with Penix? You probably just got to let him sit and wait because you paid the guy one hundred thirty or $190 million. And then, like, they're looking at Bill and asking him. He goes, uh, I don't really know. And then McAfee's like, you're talking to the guy that sat Drew Bledsoe yeah. like, for Tom Brady. <laughs> That's exa it's so funny you bring that up. It's exactly uh, what he said. So mm -hmm. so let, let's run through a more in-depth. Give me a best-case scenario and a worst-case scenario, whether it's for, for Kirk Cousins or Michael Penix. Because regardless of the quarterback position, I believe that Atlanta made this selection thinking – hey, like our franchise is going to mm -hmm. turn. They could have been, you know, defensive needs addressed, but 
They didn't go offensive playmaker. They're going to let Drake London have his role. Bijan have his role. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Pitts have his role. What, what's a best-case scenario at the quarterback position in record attached and worst-case scenario that might insinuate a little bit more of what you're thinking? Uh, I think worst case is they, they finish with, like, six wins and Kirk's wow. there and they're like, oh. We fucked it just, up. Yeah, we, we've just seen weird stuff happen. Like, every year there's a team, you're like, all right, they're built. They just got a guy, and this should roll, and for some reason it doesn't. You know what I mean? I think that's worst, worst-case scenario. Best case, I mean, they win the division, and, and, and they could, because of how poor that division could be, they end up with, you know, a bye. Would you think if they with win Kirk. that division, it would be 10 wins? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it'd be yeah. 10. It just yeah. if, if they can exceed that, that's really the goal. It, it really shouldn't be to win that division, because it's really just... It's the only division you could go ten wins. It's you got it. Yeah, no. I they went eight it. and nine with Arthur Smith. I think they're. I think they're gonna get to yeah. the ten win mark, twelve win mark. I I do think Atlanta's. Well, hold on. You want to be a little cautious about that twelve wins, tossing that around like the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know. Well, 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 well. well. <laughs> if they started red hot with eight, and then they just forgot to play football for the rest of the year, but they pulled a wins. Uh, yeah, they right. did. Oh yeah. my god. But yeah, I really do think Atlanta's built to be successful, and at the end of the day. Kirk gets hurt and again, and if you're and if you're drafting Penix, as you're like, well, Kirk can get hurt. We're gonna need a guy. Why the fuck you pay him one ninety, but or one eighty, whatever he got. And he's coming off an injury too. He is coming right off an injury, but the thing is, he was cooking before he got hurt last. Yeah, year. he cooking was. real well. Great season, and now he's got again. No one's like Justin Jefferson. No, but you got a better tight end weapon in Kyle Pitts, even though we haven't been able to see it. Natural talent. He's there. Now let's see what he does with a good quarterback. You have the most dynamic running back in the league who can play yep. ridiculous different You're positions. calling him more dynamic than Brees Hall? Yeah, I think he can catch the ball better than I, Brees Hall. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just curious because so. I know you will really have, like... Love Brees yeah, Hall, yeah. love the way he plays, but I don't think you can line Brees Hall in the slot the way you can do that with B. And be as effective as no. B. John. 100%. Boyd. 100%. Okay. And then you got Drake London. I don't like Darnell Mooney, but he's a speed guy. I feel like I kind of like Rondell Moore a little bit I better do. than Mooney. I keep yeah. forgetting Rondell Moore, and that's like their first clip that you had that went to like 10K, isn't yeah. it? That's, that's, good. that's good. I forgot about it. So Rondell Moore I think is a great piece, good speed piece. The size is a little bit he's, – he's a small guy, but like then again, you got fucking Drake London who's huge, so you're yeah. kind of complimenting it with other stuff. Yeah. Kyle, the ghost of Kyle Pitts is still floating. <laughs> he's, he's hanging around. I wish he honestly just – the only thing that's tough for me is, is like, how are you going to be taken serious as a franchise when you had the chance to just load up? Yeah. You could have taken Odunze right from Chicago's Bowers. hands. Yeah. Bowers, you could have run the two tight end set, and God forbid Pitts stinks again. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Just goodbye. And you just take the compensation pick for him whenever it comes. Or I'm yeah, sure absolutely. the Pats would have given you a fourth for him. Uh, more than Easy. Oh, my God. Yeah. Easy. Like, if he's going to have to walk anyways, like, obviously yeah. you killed the value, but you still get something back for the guy. Yeah. The crap won't pay him after, so don't fucking yeah. mind. That's all right. <laughs> Scumbag. Who, Jonathan, that yeah. bald geek? Dude, he, I'm <laughs> telling you, this man is going to be a generationally bad owner. Oh, I've been saying awful. it. He's going to be fucking awful. We're, as fans, we need to run him out of town with the first sign of do we? Yeah. success. How do you do that? Please, dweeb. We fuck, I don't know. We did it to Mac. We're going to do it to fucking <laughs> Jonathan Kraft. <laughs> dweeb. Huge dweeb. Dude, right. such a dweeb. Ugh. Give me give me an A grade. Take it. Chicago. Love Chicago? It. Love it. All right. I, Twan's been dying to get to this, so so a little, uh, elaborate a little bit so Twan can, can spill the beans. <clears throat> I give Chicago an A because you got two top ten guys. You got the best quarterback in the draft. and f So I heard McShay talking about it with Ryan Rossillo. He was like, uh, Marvin Harrison's the most NFL ready. Neighbors has the most upside. But Odunze is the one who's the least likely to fail at the NFL level. Wow, and that's that. what you needed to bring with Caleb. Contested catches. My my only concern with all that, and this, this has nothing mm -hmm. to do with Caleb Williams, just that wide receiver room. There's not enough ball to go around. No, there it, isn't. It, it, I, don't, I don't care how many, if they attempt 50 passes a game. You're not going to be able to keep DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Odunze happy knowing that realistically – they're not all going to catch 70 balls. No. I think they're going to Chicago knowing that they need to be in that kind of offense, though. I think they're going, yes. and I think Adunze is going to be the one that's like, listen, I'm the new guy here. You guys, I'm learning from you. Yeah. I'm going to take that bigger step even next year. He's coming in at a three. And then they got Komet, and they have a pass catching back in DeAndre Swift. And Caleb Williams, who I've been raving about him, guys. Like, I've been Huge blowing fan. up the group chat about this. Yeah. 
I truly think that this dude is the future of the NFL. I think mm-hmm. we're going to see C.J. Stroud-level performances from him maybe better because he's got more weapons. Yeah, I, I think w- where he was selected, how this offseason went, what the draft process was like, and how they shaped that scenario to insert him, I agree with you. But I just feel like every single time we've handed a dude franchise quarterback mm-hmm. – 5,000 mm-hmm. yards, the new Patrick Mahomes. Every time we've done that, yep. there's been an intangible hiccup that has popped up and inserted itself. And I think just being the Chicago Bears franchise could be enough for that to be the case. Knowing that in franchise history of one of the original football teams to make up the AFL, mm-hmm. they have never had a quarterback complete both 4,000 passing yards and 30 touchdowns. I think the touchdown number is a little bit more realistic. Yeah. But what if Caleb gets hurt? What if Eba Flues is, is a fucking dud? What if their defense... He is a dud. Don't get then that Then you wrong. get rid of him. Get... <laughs> <laughs> that works for them, though. I mean, like, say they get eight wins and everyone's disappointed. You get rid of the defensive coach. You already have an okay defense in place. You bring in an offensive mind who's been sitting in the wings. Like, Ben Johnson coming from Detroit next year. Like, he sat and waited... Detroit this could be the job him. he's waiting for. <laughs> Detroit would crucify him. But it works. <laughs> it does work. And o- there's only, like, again, like, it has to work somewhat right away because of the expectations. And you did dump field saying that he didn't have anybody. Now everyone is with Caleb. If it doesn't work right away, he gets that coach bridge in between. Yeah. But then that's it. And then Ryan Poles is safe because he pulled off the heist of the century, that for chubby sure. guy. I do. I, I kind of I like Ryan Poles, honestly. No, I, he's I, a little... I, any guy who looks like that at the podium... <laughs> <laughs> tell me he doesn't. Tell me he doesn't look like. I just feel like he's a, always scheming. He is, but he he looks like he's at an off-brand Italian restaurant as the manager. <laughs> <laughs> the slick hair, the suit. He's a little heavy because he's been eating it. You know, I just I didn't so, like him at first, but it is. You so know. I just like with with the way that it's all been prepared up and and talent wise. I know that there are drastic differences from Mitch Trubisky and even Justin Fields, who I love his talent and skill set. Mm-hmm. But it's the exact same scenario with with less help. That That's what it is. And this has been the cycle of the Chicago Bears for the past 10 years, since, since they paid Mike Glennon a $50 million mm-hmm. contract. Like, let's keep in mind, that was the same franchise that mm-hmm. thought Mike Glennon was going to be here for three years and, and turn Allen Robinson into mm-hmm. this... This big dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if he went anywhere else... Who, Caleb? Yeah, do you, would you have as many concerns? If Minnesota shot up, say they weren't rivals, Chicago had kept fields, if they Mi- gave a boat for him, and he ends up in, Vi- in with the Vikings. If, if if Caleb Williams went to Minnesota, I think I would have predicted him to lead the NFL in passing. Okay, all right. So it's not a... See- it's, it's not so specifically about Caleb. It, it obviously has, has a bit to do with being the number one overall selection and all that comes with it because... Because let's keep in mind, Trevor Lawrence was in, in this is exactly the I, know, I, know, I know, I know, I know. You're right. Yeah, where out. you're going, you're right with it. Trev- so. Trevor <laughs> Lawrence was a bigger prospect than Caleb Williams was. Before NILs, he, before NILs, he was more successful. He had more collegiate success. I I, I just feel like that that's, that's more of like my argument is just like Trevor Lawrence this year had – I would say just as comparable of an offense as Caleb Williams is being inserted into now. I know that the whole Urban Meyer stint was god awful, but I would say that Travis Etienne's a better running back than Caleb yeah. Williams is getting right now. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calvin Ridley is in a comparable scenario where Keenan Allen's at it at right now in his career. Yes. I'd say that DJ Moore is probably a tad bit more of a better receiver. Yeah. But yeah. now that the Jaguars are getting Brian Thomas and they're getting Odunze, obviously I would rather Odunze. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's the best contested ball catcher in this entire mm-hmm. draft class, and that makes a difference in today's NFL. But I, I just feel like Trevor Lawrence is heavily disappointed in the NFL, if you want me to be honest. And I, I, agree. I, I I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve another contract because – I would give him another contract over a guy like Tua a lot yes. quicker, but I just feel like there's a lot more to that conversation. I really do. Yeah, I, my only concern with Caleb's the the likability. Like he already texted the punter, "You won't be punting much here." I don't like that. I hate that. I, yeah, I, hate I, that. I, dis- I, like I despise that. With so that's the only thing I don't like about him. And I get it. Like when people are so great at something, it's okay to know you're you're that you're good. Great. Yeah. But dude, you haven't even been to the dance yet. You know what I mean? Like. 
I don't know. Like, the whole nails thing doesn't bother me. Yeah. As someone who cries frequently after work, it doesn't <laughs> bother me. But I don't run home to my mom. And yeah. then cry in Ronda's arms. After a game. On live yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. I just, just I think he's so thing. unfairly <laughs> done by the media, though, that they're just like, the camera's on him. The guy can't fucking live so his why life are we, without getting... So why am I wrong about If Josh that. Allen ran into his mom's arms crying right now, you wouldn't say anything? Dude, I would light Kev up that's all I mean. day for that. <laughs> that's but that's, I mean. hey, that's what I want to, I want to light Kev up for that. Listen, yeah. crying, Wait, so crying's fine. When, when Kev saw the picture yesterday, you know, his first words... I can't wait to put Twan through one of those chairs. Yeah, <laughs> right, buddy. What do you yeah, got to right, say to Kev? <laughs> to buddy can't lift me. You seen those noodle arms he's got? <laughs> All right, we'll make it official now. It's a, a nice bet. Uh, Pats, two-win buffer for, between them and the Bills. I'll take the Pats this year on that. Wow. Oh, see, I think the Bills weird, are going to weirdly surprise people this year. I think year. this division's going to suck. Wow! I, I will say I think the Jets take the division this year. Yeah, possible, probably. I, yeah. I think so. If Jets and Miami. Rogers can walk. Rogers stays healthy, but we're seeing like with Achilles injuries, and now we're going off topic from the draft. But <laughs> with Achilles injuries, people are coming back faster than ever. They're coming back healthier than ever. And I'm not talking about just blowing smoke with like that shit about Aaron Rodgers last year. Look at yeah, Jamal Hill getting in an octagon nine months after he tore his Achilles playing basketball. Like, yeah, it's just naturally how medicines work and how the doctors are working. So, yeah, it's All interesting. Right. So no. tell us, tell us why. My opinion's wrong on Caleb Williams, and give me an A grade. You're not. Your opinion is not wrong. No. You like you can't. We, we're not going to know until we see it, right? Yeah. So right here, we're all say it's all speculation until he steps on that field. Just looking at how he played in college, the one thing that I think that he needed to do better was not put himself in harder positions. I think that's ten times harder to do when you're loaded the way they are. And I get USC had a pretty good team, but Just now no, you're looking at the Charlotte no Bears team, right? You, they didn't have a guy like Odunze. Well, Addison wasn't there this year. No, he wasn't. Like, he was putting himself into these situations where he was trying to play hero ball. I don't think he's going to do that when he gets to the NFL. But, again, we're going to see. He might not have to. He might, he might not have to. It might really be that much easier. I do think that Chicago's got something they're building on here. And I like their defense's ability to give the ball back to Caleb Williams if he does make a mistake. Yep. A grade. A grade. Las Vegas. Yeah. Steve, we talked about it a little bit before. I think Vegas fucking killed it. Okay. I think they said, you know what? We're not going to get our quarterback. But you know what? Denver made a massive, massive mistake taking Bo Nix. Now we're going to take Brock Bowers. They're going to be a problem in that division, Steve. Yeah, I, 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 I wrote down here as part of like some other things that I wanted to keep in mind as part of this conversation. For the best value through the first two rounds, it absolutely is the Las Vegas Raiders. Mm-hmm. The fact that they stood home yes. and arguably got the best offensive player in the entire draft in Brock Bowers. And then, whether it's the franchise of the future or whatever the case may be, and you just needed offensive line help, Jackson Powers Johnson at 44, like, that's a guy that, w- that was being mocked to go at 20, yep. or 21, to, to the Miami Dolphins. So, like, the fact that that wasn't the case, and they stood home and made both of those picks, I feel better about Devontae Adams going into this year. Yep. I would draft him higher in fantasy, regardless of the quarterback yep. scenario. Jacoby Myers made himself a very prominent role and a pretty yeah. prospect as a wide receiver, too, and a player in the league. Their defense got more shirt up this offseason. I feel a lot more confident about that unit than I have in a long time. Mm-hmm. I actually think that the Raiders are going to be competitive. Yeah. I, I think that, that you too, I think that the Chiefs are going to have a bit, I don't want to say a big problem this year. There's heavy expectations. There's a lot of new things going on in Kansas City, and I think with John Harbaugh entering the division, I'm going to talk about the Chargers later. They're my favorite draft this year, my entire favorite draft. I actually feel like from the top to bottom, they got the the most impact players at every single selection. Like Colson at the linebacker mm-hmm. position is going to be huge for them to go and teach you know, that back. highball defense. Then you you got uh, Alton McConkey. Mm-hmm. Like McConkey's gonna be a wide receiver one day one. And like yeah, I know so good. Mike, like Mike Scott, but shout out Mike. We, we were mm-hmm. talking through the draft and shit like that. He said if if we were gonna just draft a wide receiver, why trade back and just not get McConkey, knowing he's the better dude? Then you get you get Brendan Rice, way later coming mm-hmm. from the system and the family that he comes in, still gets to stay in L. A. And a boy, I'm I'm gonna buy a boy be. They they got down in the defensive line like close enough. Yeah, <laughs> I I feel like I feel like the Chargers are in a great scenario for success. I think the Raiders are going to be a really competitive team. 
not just for this upcoming year, but for going forward. That's why I think you can't just hand it to the Chiefs. It, it, it's new days. I don't think they have to be as worried about Denver, who I was hopeful was going to have a lot better of an offseason, but I am a little bit disappointed. I'm not going to say that they failed the draft, and I'm not giving out any D or F grades because mm-hmm. I talked about why I like the Troy Franklin to pair with Bo Nix. I just, I just feel like that was more of a panic pick. If Penix didn't go at 8, Bo Nix wouldn't have won at 12. No way. That was and the only, one of the few picks in the draft I nailed on the head yeah. was, was uh, Bo Nix to Denver. I knew they would make a sucker move. <laughs> Suckers. Not even that. Why not trade back? Because you know there was exactly. four or five teams behind you. No one was taking him. Yeah, the Colts no weren't drafting Bo Nix. not taking Bo Nix. <laughs> not even that. Like, even if, you know, you were worried. I know the Raiders got... I was like, the, the Raiders weren't trading back up. No one was trading back up for that guy. Yeah. I feel like the Raiders were going for Penix. They weren't going yeah. for Bo Nix. Anybody, like, and he would have had to fall in their laps. Yeah. It would, it would have, and, dude, I would have had to have been in round two because there's yeah. no yeah. fucking way they were taking him no. round one. Yeah. Especially but with what they did, they crushed now, it. Now that Atlanta drafted Penix at eight, I feel a lot more realistic chance that Penix actually would have went at 13 to the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Anyway. 100%. And... Going back to the Raiders, we talked about, you know, them being my best draft. I mean, I just think with Jackson Powers Johnson as well, you have a couple good tackles. On it. Like, Colton Miller's a good tackle. You're going to move. Now you have a good guy on the inside there, too. I think this that offensive line mm-hmm. is starting to get rounded out really well. Their defense under Antonio Pierce has been night and day difference than under McDan- yep. McDaniels. Like, they've played incredibly well. Jack Jones has actually found a home there. You got Wilkins. You got Tyree Wilson, who you drafted last year. You're hoping to be something. You got Max Crosby, who's the most slept-on player in the entire mm-hmm. NFL. Spillane comes into his own last year at linebacker. The team is fucking unbelievable right well now. Well coached. Mm-hmm. I like Antonio Pierce. They're gritty, and that team wants to play behind Antonio Pierce. If yeah. they brought in a new coach, I would have been like, oh, fuck, the Raiders are just did it again. Yeah, but they true. like Antonio Pierce. They're going to play really d- hard behind him so I, I love it that's my best draft Lou who, yeah. who you got I, I had like the Bears. I had the Bears. I only gave right. three A's three okay. so, actual solid A's Real through quick, all what of you, it what are your other two A's I got the Chargers too okay. I thought the Chargers killed it and I went Seattle okay I thought Seattle filled everything in perfectly according to the value mm-hmm. and I just trust them you know what I mean it's certain it's tough too because like a team like not to, to jump to another team but like Kansas City traded up for Worthy I don't Buffalo, dude. I thought that. <laughs> listen, I don't think that's a good pick. I only think it's going to work because it's Kansas City. I agree. If any other agree. team did that, you drafted a guy who can just run, not great at catching. I'd be like, that pick was atrocious. Yeah, I actually, I actually feel like Kansas City's better pick came in the the when they drafted the BYU yes, tackle. Yes, yes. Because I feel like one, we obviously know like the history with BYU and Andy Reid, but I also just feel like that's already going to be an improvement for Jawan Taylor, who I don't know how he's played in the NFL for ten years and jumps up with false stuff. Every single play, every like it literally makes no sense. Even a Madden, yeah. yeah. But he, but, but he <laughs> didn't do it in the Super Bowl, at all right? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. <laughs> no, it was crazy. Like, I, I've never seen, like, an offensive lineman with the experience get flagged um, so much in my life, honestly. But on top of that, I gave out two B-pluses that I really wanted to talk about, mm-hmm. both in the AFC North, the Pittsburgh Steelers and mm-hmm. the Baltimore Ravens. So I'm going to run through these two drafts. I want you guys to talk about, you know, the, the team out of these two that you feel like might be – might have had the better draft, mm-hmm. how this might impact their roster in that division specifically. Yep. The Pittsburgh Steelers specifically, I mean, two offensive linemen off the board, like that was the biggest need. They had trouble yep. running the ball the past couple years. They couldn't keep Kenny Pickett up, right? Now that they improved the quarterback room, you can't say that that's the same case. You get Fatanu, who can play on the either side of the line, where I was just mm-hmm. saying the scenario, Penix was the lefty. He was realistically playing the right tackle scenario, but can yep. play left tackle if they didn't want Broderick Jones to do so. And then Zach Frazier, who was raved about it as one of the better you know, interior linemen in the entire draft. They, they go and get a center, and we know that the, the Steelers have had staple centers for, for years now. They go and get a guy that can do that, or he can be you know a guard. You improve the wide receiver room, and we know how good they are at drafting mid-round wide receivers. I think Roman Wilson isn't going to be, you know, a 1,500 guy. Mm -hmm. But I think he can have a year one similar to what Juju did in that offense. Like, absolutely, 1,100 yards. I think that they're going to continue to look to improve that wide receiver room. And I think with Arthur Smith there, they're going to be more effective with running the football. I think that's a fact. Peyton Wilson was talked about as the best linebacker of the class, but because of some – 
meniscus or ligament issues in the knee and, and age mm-hmm. ke- kept in mind. He's viewed as a one-contract player. All they need is one contract out of a guy like that next to Patrick Queen to, to have a, a great defense and win mm-hmm. a Super Bowl, realistically. Yep. And then on the Baltimore Ravens side, you want to talk about, you know, iffy defensive back scenarios. You still have Marlon Humphrey. You got Geno Stone, who who was, you know, a, a great player for them last year. Kyle Hamilton made the top safety list in his, his rookie year mm-hmm. in the NFL. You had Nate Wiggins and TJ Tampa with, with great yep. values at those selections. Isaac, as as a pass rusher coming from Penn State, mm-hmm. you put next to Owe. And then Rosengarten at the offensive tackle position that you can put on either side of the line, mm-hmm. knowing that Ronnie Stanley's really been banged up the past couple of years. Look, like I know the Ravens are a franchise that are viewed a little bit differently than, than most other franchises, but I feel like these two teams really nailed it and had a good understanding of where the value lied and how they can improve their team. And I feel like they did it both. I feel like these are the two top teams in that division. I know you're a big Bengals guy. I just feel like I'm not that big of a man. I'm a big Burrow guy. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I want to lean Steelers just because I thought between the old line and then getting the receiver. I, if I was the Ravens, I, I definitely would have won up and got another. I, I don't know why receiver. they're against get, against getting receivers. Like, it, dude, I'm with there, right there with you. I just don't. I don't understand. They that. just they just <laughs> don't pass the ball 40, 50 times a game. But so they it's want like, to, which is odd. I see. I, just, I, I don't think that they want to. I really. I well, I they tried. Like, no. They, they, yeah, they Bro, did. Like, but, you think Bateman is like a like workable too? Really? No. I'm, no, but but my whole thing is is like for that offense, he's realistically a three. I think I think Likely and Andrews are, are more valued pass catching options than him. I think it's I think it's Zay, and then it goes to those two tight ends, mm-hmm. and then I feel like at Bateman is like a a shifty slot guy. Like you're not talking about him as like a dominant X receiver. Like mm-hmm. I don't think the expectations are ever for Bateman to catch a thousand yards, and I just feel like. And I said this leading up to the draft process. If the Ravens wanted to go out there and get a prominent wide receiver, they could have done that for years now. I just feel like that they know that that's not their game, and if they're not going to attempt to pass the ball no. more than 25 times, they'd rather invest in the offensive line and improve their blocking scheme to run the ball more successfully than to have to put themselves in more pass-heavy scenarios. But we yeah. do see Lamar run around on the back a lot, and he does a great job of just being able to avoid getting tackled for long periods of time. The receivers they have aren't the super quick guys, though, that can just go boom, gone, and Lamar's out of the pocket and he hits him. Like, that's what I want them to get. Like, I feel like we talked about Kansas City being perfect for Xavier Worthy. In a sneaky way, I feel like Baltimore would work well, too, especially if Lamar's moving around a lot. He's just all of a sudden gone. He's just got to catch it. I thought McConkie would have been the best wide receiver. Yeah, I agree. It's just tough because the one knock on them is they don't play well from behind because they have to throw it. You've got to set him up well. Or not even that. Take another running back. Like, one of the top two. Like, you're going to tell me they couldn't spring for a third or a fourth from Blake Corum. Yeah. Just to Mm -hmm. have another solidified back who doesn't get hurt that often and is reliable to keep that run game going. That's the thing is... I'm all for them not throwing 25 times a game, but you have to be able to run it consistently without Lamar putting himself at risk. Do you feel like Derrick Henry will help that? I do, but it's just like, will they see it coming? Yeah. What I said to Tuan was, I... Even though that's like one of the more splashy additions of the offseason, I feel like... He needs to be acclimated there extremely slowly. Yes. Like, I don't think he should touch the ball on offense more than 10, 12 times a game through mm-hmm. the first eight weeks of the season, knowing that he's not there for the, for the regular season. No, he's, he's not. He's there to help put them over the edge and, and, you know, make teams like, let's say, Jacksonville or the Steelers or whatever, the Bills, whatever AFC team it was, a lot more harder to take a dude down and tackle at the goal line. His greatest ability will be to keep them on the field. Yeah. That's absolutely. all he has to do is keep them on the field. Mm. B grades that you guys want to talk about. I actually like New Orleans draft, and I'm one to shit on New Orleans all the time. Really? I really I love the draft. I really think that they got uh, – who was the tackle that they got? Um, Felice. Fuaga, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuaga. Um, and <laughs> they're doing a fucking magic trick on the McAfee broadcast while he's getting picked. No one talked about him at all. But I do think is a really, really good player. Um, again, we talked about it. I think Rattler's a good person to have to Love learn, that pick. To learn Love behind that Derek pick. Carr for a little bit. And you know he's not going in there immediately. They're going to take their time with it. I think that in a draft where New Orleans needed to do well, they needed players, they needed capital. Oh, it was Kool-Aid. Yeah, 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 yeah it was Kool-Aid. Good, dude, that's a good pay. And again, I talked about how I don't think Kool-Aid's a, the number three corner in the draft. No. 
No. But I think he fits well with that system. And again, like, next to Lattimore, next to Lattimore, right? And you have Tyron Matthew back there. And I get it. I'm never gung ho on Tyron Matthew, but like they have these players back there where now they get to round it out more. And I just think they were the right picks. They filled needs that they had. Yes. And they got them with good players. Good value. It wasn't like they got scrubs. Good value. My, I felt like it was important for them to get players. I wish that they could have had a draft similar to like Arizona and be able to take 10 guys because. They're a team that needs that overhaul. See, Zona's an A for me. I think Zona fucking crushed it. We talked we talked about this before we started, but like yeah. when I think of Arizona, like they got who I think is gonna be the best receiver in the draft. They get um Darius, Darius Robinson. Robinson, great, great edge rusher. Max Melton. Max Melton, and Trey I told Benson. you I love the Trey Benson pick, man. I really, really like the Trey Benson pick. I think that he is a great compliment in that backfield and eventually will be the number one guy in the backfield. I just think he's he's a stud. Like he is yeah. a in Florida State like to run the ball a lot last year. See see, look, here, here's my whole thing with, with Arizona and like I know that they're they're probably the youngest roster in the entire mm-hmm. NFL. I just wish that instead of picking twelve guys and just hoping that half of them have an extended NFL career, that they made six picks, but it was like oh, shit, these are six players that are going to change our franchise. And I felt like the first two picks in MHA and Robinson are going to do that. I, I don't know that Melton's going to be one of like those dominant dudes, and I just feel like they could have had different type of impact or hype around their draft process. And I know that that's not what it's about. It's about getting W's mm-hmm. on paper. Yep. I just feel like they're in a really competitive division, and it's yep. more important to get quality players than a quantity of players yep. and i feel like that's something like seattle did like seattle got great quality players mm-hmm. like when they picked always do i yeah i have questions about like san francisco and we'll talk about that a little bit later but even like the rams like they had kyron williams last year it was a top one or two running back in the nfl not enough go and get quorum like I love that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, Jared Verse, like, that's a quality player right there. Debatable steal of the draft. Yeah, Debatable absolutely. Debatable steal of the draft. And the best trade-up, I would say, was Minnesota getting Dallas Turner. It, well, the, the Easily. Fa- see, like, Easily. the fact that, like, Dallas, the, the fact that Minnesota was able to keep both of their first-round picks and also get two of the better, I don't want to say two of the better plays in the draft, but a player that you wanted and a person that I viewed as, as a top defender of the, like, it's the same process of, of the Texans last year, just not at one and two, no. which is which is all the more. And, and, you know, there was so much talk about, oh, this is ammunition to trade up a one quarterback. It's even better that that wasn't the case. Yeah. You know, like exactly. I, I feel and that's why I'm not here to just say like, oh, Chicago Bears, knowing that the Lions address needs. Let, let's just get right into it. The, the teams that address needs for me, the Lions defensive backs, being able to get Arnold and Rakestraw, those might be... T- Two great picks that I have up there with with the Raiders, as yeah. you know, great values. You want to talk about Dallas, who get Guyton, who I feel like is a little mm-hmm. bit raw at the tackle position, but is a, a mauler, yeah. like absolute massive yeah. human being. Dude. And then you get you get BB at the the guard position, like you put him next to Smith, and you put him next to Martin. It's like, dude, like you're talking about a reshaped offensive yeah. line right away, and. I put the Patriots in this group. Like, we needed different players on offense. You got May. You got Milton. Like, I feel like at least, like, you have some direction at the quarterback position. You get two wide receivers in Polk and Baker, and they seem pretty hyped up about that. And then, like, I wasn't too crazy about Wallace. I actually thought that there were some better tackles on yep. the board. Like, then, then him, he comes off as, like, a little stiff to me. But you're investing in the right positions. And, like, that's what's important mm-hmm. to me. Obviously, Robin, on the interior side of that, there's a lot of teams that, like, just address needs. And, and that's why I'm not so quick to just say, oh, this, this, and this for the Chicago Bears. Because that entire division improved while they were in the scenario to make the biggest splash. That yep. doesn't translate on paper. No, right it away. doesn't. That division's going to be scary. Really good. It's, it's but the best in football right yeah. now. And, and yep. I think it's less likely that a team in that division wins 12 wins. I think it's closer that they're all to like 10. Because yes. I think we're actually going to start seeing them trade with each other a little bit more often in split. They, they're going to have to. Honestly, for, for teams that fill the needs, I think right off the bat, I go to Philly. Okay. I, they needed corners. About they that, they yeah. needed corners. They got two of the best. I wanted Cooper DeGene. He plays safety too. Um, and then who else was it that I whose draft I really really liked from from Philly needs? I thought the Jets did pretty damn good, Do you? considering how bad it could have gone. I yeah. think 
Brock Bowers is the only guy I think doesn't work there because Fashano. Yeah, who's gonna protect who's gonna protect the quarterback? Like you have to think long term. They got a wide receiver in the third. Like I thought they filled the needs that they had to, and like you said, I the, the Pats did a good job as much as I would like to to not support that. <laughs> Thank you very Minnesota much. Minnesota too. Uh, I, honestly, JJ McCarthy. I'm gonna call it now. He's Brock Purdy of next year. Yeah, absolutely. That's, it. That's the scenario he's set up in schematically. He's gonna be asked to do the same exact things with better players. Yes, with better players around him. Plain and simple. I gotta say, you know who else is. I, I like Tennessee's draft a lot too. Dude, did, did oh, you? I hated it. Oh, I, yeah, you didn't? I was I iffy it. on it. I really Gross. was. Gross. Latham was a bad pick. Oh, you think for them they See, already I, have, I, they already have that position filled. They're just gonna have them sitting there like, all right, by who? Um, I don't think Skaronski is like Skaronski's inside. So yeah, no, so, they, it, so he's a right tackle. No, no, they're, they're, so they moved, they, have they inside. moved him to guard oh, last year. Yeah. So uh, I think I think the expectation is Latham to play on the right side for Tennessee right tackle. Yeah, I, st- so I don't know. Good big dude, and I mean, dude, when you look at Bama's O line last year, man, they made fucking Jalen. No, Miller they're always great. Huge. They look. They made Miller huge. look fucking Low. great. So I just I, I think it's a great. And you saw a lot of people start to have J C Latham go up. People were saying J C Latham was going to go to the Chargers, which the board, yeah. I thought was fucking ridiculous. If That's I'm what I mean. Is they Alt got is the best. They yeah. got baited by like I thought they got baited just because I their O line I don't think is that bad. I just. They're all they're doing all of this for a bad QB. That's yeah. the only and you didn't even take a right. flyer on Spencer Rattler. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I, I know. You know. God I know. forbid you got a guy who literally, even with the team that wasn't terrible, wasn't good. So like, Lou, I don't think he's that terrible, but he's not good. You're in that. You. You're in that division. Twan talked about expectations for Tajay Spears. You talk about an addition of Calvin Ridley yeah. there with D Hop, and you bring in a Tony Pollard. What are the expectations for a team like Tennessee? In your opinion, on, for someone on, that plays them twice a year, on paper, I think it's it's probably like eight or nine wins. But Do you think so? Okay. With Sneed too. Sneed's yeah. another big addition. My, Darius Sneed. Yes. My only thing is, you took all of those guys, two of them in their one's twenty nine, about to be thirty. The other is in his thirties, in the worst situation any of them have ever been in. One of which who just got paid for the first time. One of the other one who got a real contract because Ridley couldn't really play on his other. One. He did, but. I don't think he got paid for that year he was suspended. Yeah, no, definitely not. It's just tough. I think all of them downgraded for a paycheck outside of D-Hop. So we'll see, man. It all comes from the QB, and they also got rid of a top-five coach in football. Yeah. Like, let's Which not act crazy. like this is a good a good decision-making franchise. I hold out on it. I'm scared of everyone else. Yeah. That's the only team where I'm like, you were going to play that guy twice? They don't scare me either. Bring I, on. I do. I just I think they got a good player right there at seven. I really did. And I'm, I'm they very probably saw the player, yeah. I mean, like we said, right? Blue chip, right? We're talking Alabama, yeah. blue chip. But I, I I agree with you. I mean, I'm not fucking scared of the Titans. No, not anyway. <laughs> As a Patriots fan, you'd feel comfortable playing them twice? Like, yeah, I, I feel no problem. Like That's one of those teams where I'm like, oh, we might snag too. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, you think, like, think of this. You have Ridley's best years behind him. D-Hop's on the way out the door. And, like, we've seen guys leave Kansas City and not be the same. I don't think Pollard's a fit either. No. I don't I don't know how Pollard fits into that offense. He's the same fucking, we said it. He's the same fucking thing as Tajay Spears. Yeah. And I Half think season Spears is hero. younger and better. Half yeah. season hero. Yep. Yeah. That's and all no, he is. That yep. is. So I want to talk about, you know, some of the other things that, that we um, talked about in the draft. You thought that Tennessee had a sneaky good draft. I want to talk about a team that hasn't been mentioned a lot this offseason, but I thought they had a sneaky good draft. Positions in need, needed to get talent in this direction. The Carolina Panthers. Look, yeah, not with what a, they had. What? With what they had. With, well, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, they didn't have a first-round pick, but for them to address the offensive side of the ball as much as they did, you get... Leggett, who Gomes, shout out Gomes, who's he's ecstatic to both. I actually thought that Troy Franklin was going to go before him. Troy Franklin mm-hmm. went two rounds after this dude. So I just feel like his experience being a little bit more of a veteran at that collegiate level is, is why Carolina went in this direction. They don't want to put Bryce Young around raw dudes. They want to mm-hmm. put him around dudes that can actually, you know, help generate that success going forward. And how else can you better do that? Now Adam Thielen's viewed as like a two, right? If we want to say that Leggett was, was drafted to be a one. Jonathan Brooks is an improvement at the running back yep. position. Tavion Sanders is, a, is an improvement at the tight end position. So you can't say that they're not trying with Bryce Young, you know? It's just, are you trying like too late? Is it is it like 
is last year going to be too bad of a taste to like really overcome? And what is a good year for the Carolina Panthers this year? Like if if they get seven wins, is that viewed as a good year? Yeah. Yeah. It, it just, <laughs> no, like, I know. Yeah. yeah. That's what's he, sad. He, he just, I don't know, it's you drafted a guy that, that can't throw over the middle of the field because he can't see it. Like, <laughs> yeah. where, how do you fix that? Like, I no, you're definitely right, Steve. They're helping the situation. But again, I, I, I think I forget who said it. QBs now get till their second Thanksgiving. And after the second Thanksgiving, if you are not the guy, it. it's over. And I think they put it in a good position where they can find that out. And then you plan for the next year. That's it. That's all you got to do. I mean, you got right. You gave my guy Frank Wright the boot very early. <laughs> yeah, no. That guy oh, gets no. a raw deal everywhere he goes. Everywhere it's awful. He goes, He's a man shot, of dude. God. Nothing good happens to him. <laughs> He's saying prayers. They're handing him pink slips. He's like, Jesus, thank you. <laughs> Tuan, is this is this a team? That, and look, I know we just talked about the Saints. Is this a team that can be win more games than the Saints this year? No, no, no. Okay. I just think I I really do think they're in for a struggle. I mean, their defense yeah. is their saving grace. If I'm going to be honest, and they just I mean, get their best player go away to the Giants. I know they got the, the, they gave Derek Brown the money, right? Yeah. I think Derek Brown is one of the best interior filthy, linemen. Filthy, 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 dude. Just absolute great run stopper. J.C. Horn coming back healthy. I think he's right. going to be a lockdown corner. You have Jeremy Chin. Jeremy Chin stuck around? Yeah. Yep. And then you go to the offensive Chasey side of the ball, and it's like, I think Leggett's good. We're going to have to see how it all works out in the NFL with Bryce thrown to him. I think Bryce is clean between the ears, but, like, where you said it perfectly is, like, it's the physical build that scares me a little bit there. You got Thielen, who's aging, like, M- fucking milk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and he's their saving grace. I yeah. know that's. It's just it's sad to see Miles miss- Sanders. You have dead money in because he did fuck all last year. Like, but they're missing on draft picks too. Like Icky Aquino. Yeah. What the hell is like? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, th- like that's a huge part of Bryce Young feeling a little bit better back there. And it's just like, is that a miss or is that just a bad coach team? Because I feel like there's two different ways to really view it. it- you could say it's a little bit of both, but like. This dude's fucking six seven three forty. Like, what? Do you, what? Do you, he's not missing anything. He's the first QB I've seen drafted in the first round in a long time, outside of my dear friend Josh Rosen. <laughs> that that you watch play a full season and there was not one. Wow, that was good. Hey, Lewis. even Will Levis. Even Will Levis had a moment. I know in we games have where you're like fucking touchdowns to D Hop with a sick deep ball. Yeah, yeah. what? What a play. There was no. Wow, at all. Lou was heavy on the Rosen train. Agree. Huge Rosen guy. Were you a big Rosen guy? Of course. Oh, my God. <laughs> Huge. I was just out on Josh Allen. I can't with that. I, you know, it's all right. Because why? Because <laughs> Mel Kuyper was like, oh, oh. No, yeah, it just, right? I, I like right? my QBs to hit the target when they get drafted. Just I feel accuracy. That. True. Yeah, I feel that. All right, so we talked about my sneaky good draft. We talked about some teams that address needs. I want to talk about my favorite pick. Yeah. So this was a guy I felt like in the back end of one, teams could have traded up for. But realistically, this is a position that isn't valued in round one as much as it was over past years. The linebacker position. I feel like Edron Cooper was such a good yep. pick and fit for the Green Bay Packers. And one of these guys is going to hit. And me, I don't know these are two bigger Packers fans outside of Green Bay than you and I when it comes to like how well they're running, what they do. Yeah, They're literally their worst draft. You'll see, oh, that's a B. Yeah. Two guys that can play, two guys that rotate, and it's like they do it again. It, it, every single year. And it might not be, you know, the most loud picks. No. And, and everybody might not agree with their process, but they hit. You yes. know what I mean? And they hit continuously. They hit consecutively. The The question was keeping Jordan Love upright. They got a tackle, right? Now you come in round two, and I feel like a guy that could have been a top 25 pick in Cooper went at at. 45, yep. that's a great value. You know, you're putting him in there with other great selections you made in the defensive side of the ball. They invest in, you know, Xavier McKinney on the back yep. end. You bring in a Josh Jacobs. You draft a running back, too. It's just like Matt LaFleur, like, I feel like is such an underrated coach in this league. And Somehow he's yeah. still underrated. It, I, it's I, crazy. It's insane. it's insane, dude. Only thing I wish they did was get Troy Franklin. I thought that guy would have been the perfect piece you let you know, yeah. Christian out the door. My hope, I think, and, and I think that we all feel that way about Christian Watson, yeah. right? Like he's nice catch. That was you. Yeah, right. I had nothing to do. With <laughs> Troy, Troy <laughs> Franklin would never. Yeah, right. No, no, he wouldn't. <laughs> That's uh, why they denied my application. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they were like Suffolk University. It just, it's not one of the schools. <laughs> <laughs> Talk uh, about blue chip. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
But no, like I, I just feel like they felt that they still have an abundance in that room Plus. that they felt like it wasn't a position or direction that they needed to go in. And I just feel like when they still had Watson on the rookie deal that they're just like, let's give it another year. Play it you out. know what I mean? Yeah. And and look, if if it starts the same way it did last year, then maybe that's a guy you move in the middle of the season. Of course. But maybe, maybe you know, you entertain like a dog type of conversation or maybe the Packers are looking for that like a little bit later on. Like, we have no idea, but this is a team that's ready to compete. I think that they're a 10 win football team, and I know that's tough to say, but realistically, I think two or three 10 win football teams could come out of the NFC in that division specifically. Whether, like, yeah, the, the Lions are going to be expected to win 10 games, and you know, you want to put the Bears in that conversation, somebody can rightfully put the Vikings in that conversation, yep. knowing how talented their offense really is. So, that was my favorite pick. On top of that, I want to share my favorite drafts. Both the L.A. teams, the L.A. Chargers yep. and the L.A. Rams. I talked about the Chargers a little bit, but I feel like McConkie can be a day-one starter and a thousand-yard receiver right away. But the Rams in verse, Fisk, who you loved, Tuan. Yep. Corum, I feel like, is a really good pick. And Kinchins was a guy that was supposed to go in two at the safety position that they were just able to get in round four. So I know that replacing Aaron Donald is going to be something that's going to take a lot of time. I think that they feel really good about guys like Colby on the offensive yep. front. I talked about Ernest Jones in my positional rankings when it came to the linebacker position. They bring in Darius Williams, who was mentioned in our cornerback conversation yep. in the positional rankings, Tuan. I feel like the Rams are a really talented team. I think the Rams or the, the Seahawks are really going to take that division. And that leads me to share that the 49ers were my team that were like, my uh -huh. biggest head scratches, my biggest questions. Look, we know all the conversation about Ayuk. We know the conversations about Debo. Jawan Jennings, I think, is, is an above-average third wide receiver. You have Kittle. You've got McCaffrey. Why draft two wide receivers? Like, I, just, I don't get it. You draft Pearsall, and look, if he's the best player available, that's great. I don't feel like their offensive line was as good as people thought it was. I feel like that's something that they could address a little bit more. And Arik Armstead isn't going to be an easy name to just replace on that no. offensive line. Dre Greenlaw tore, had a major injury last year, and I don't feel like your secondary is as prominent as it really should be. So that was why it was my biggest head scratcher. Now, do I feel like coaching makes up for a lot of that? Yes. Yeah, I absolutely do, because Kyle Shanahan puts his players in scenarios for success almost better than any other coach in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like, you know, it has to get to a point where – we're critiquing a team like this because, look, like, you blew it in your opportunity. You were at the Super Bowl. You should have lost the NFC Championship. Shit, you almost lost a divisional. Yep. Like, let's keep all of that in mind. If McCaffrey wasn't there, you're talking about a big difference. And that's why I showed as much love and respect to Brock Purdy being three on the positional rankings because I feel like too much is going to Shanahan knowing that he's blowing all these big moments. Yeah. And knowing that he took over... To your point with the defensive oh, side, it's like <laughs> you literally couldn't decide who to call the plays at the end of the fourth quarter of the game. Your yeah. defense have got, has gotten progressively worse every year, and you let a, your best defensive coach walk out the door. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it really is scary. I mean, he can only hang on to the Shanahan name and what he does offensively for a while because if, if he's got to win, he has gotta to win. win. He has to win. Hear me out. Jets blow it. Robert Sala goes back to play DC. Do things change? Yes, hundred percent, day and night. Wait, hold on. So you're saying like he gets fired from Jets? Or you're saying like forget he even went to the no, Jets? He gets Jets fired. are yeah, Jets are failure. He gets fired. He goes, goes back. back goes there. back to San Fran. I, I think I think he instantly improves that defense. Definitely, but, the but secondary I, I, but by a mile. But I I just don't I don't think it changed anything about like their draft though, and like no. that that's oh, no, like no, no, my no, whole no. thing. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think I think definitely things were different defensively with Sala there. Um, but, but I, I don't feel like that's a coaching tree that, that lacks, you know, talent, mm -hmm. whether, whether it's different positions, like we've seen every single year, somebody from that tree, what, whether it's on the Rams, the 49ers, or even coming from Miami now are, are going to get, you know, yeah. opportunities. Look at Bobby Slowick in, in Houston, like next year, he should have got a head coaching opportunity this year. He, next year he's going to, you know, like that's just, that's what the case is. And it comes from, you know, that, that same route. Um, as we're approaching, you know, an, an hour on here, I did just want to share. Um, I didn't talk about the Giants too much. I'm happy with the way, you know, round one went. Yep. And, you know, I'm not trying to say this in any biased perspective. 
regardless of what the quarterback position is looking like for us, I feel like Neighbors is going to be the most impactful rookie wide receiver I in agree. the NFL. I agree. I agree. 100%. 100% He's the best agree. wide receiver that the Giants have ever drafted, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, Odell. Oh, maybe. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to remember Odell. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, in, in, Another he, LSU guy, though. Yeah, like, yeah. No, absolutely. Wide receiver, you? Yeah. No, it, it, it's tough. And, and look, that's like Marvin Harrison – I just feel like his name isn't screaming as much because he don't want that attention. I love the fact that he's like, I don't want to run a 40 because I'm training to play football. Like, I love that. It, it fires me up knowing that there's guys that's in, in just coming from his background. I expect that. I think fantasy wise, if we want to bring that into a conversation, both of those dudes can can realistically be drafted in like round five if you want me to be honest and like be yes. plug and play starters. Dude. I just don't think Odunze can be that knowing how much other like. Ball has to be shared yeah, it, there. Caleb, uh, sorry, Keenan would have to go down for it him to, to make a, a big impact. Yeah, because I don't think they'd throw Komet to the side either. No, not doesn't at all. Fit, doesn't do it for me. I think Marvin in, is going to go top. Th- I just think the hype around his name, he's going to go top three in fantasy. Top three rounds in well, fantasy. Well, his dad's a top four wide receiver ever, so let's yeah. let's keep that in mind. Yeah. And he, he wore the chain. I was pissed. Top five criminal, yeah. too. It's cr- top five. <laughs> <laughs> no one talks about that. No one talks about it. Because he's so fucking good. Same thing with Tyreek. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to get on the Tyreek. Sorry, Tony. Ray Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Ray Rice. Yeah, right. right. Oh, man. Bunch that, of criminals. Now we're camera. Camera. just picking on it, right? Um. <laughs> But just wanted to give you guys the opportunity, you know, maybe picks, maybe your team fits, just anything that we want to talk about as we break it down. A.D. Mitchell. Yeah. Come on. I just... Look, what's the expectations for A.D. Mitchell? Does this help Michael Pittman? How does this... How is Jonathan Taylor this year compared to last in a different scenario? Yeah, so he he's going to be the better version of what they wanted Alec Pierce to be. The take off the top guy. Yeah. yeah, the take off the top guy. Pittman's still the X. You put him at the Y, and then you keep down at the slot. You know what I mean, or whatever the numbers, uh, the letters correlate to that. Oh, I was gonna say, like, I feel like Pittman's more of like that slot guy. You'd think AD will play the the, the X, or you'd think they'll put him inside. I think they'll keep Pittman outside because he can come in very well. His routes are really smooth, so if they, I mean, he can play anywhere. Yeah. It's just now he finally has a guy that's like, oh, this guy can run too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Pierce can run, it's just he can't catch. Yeah. And you just drafted a guy. <laughs> you just drafted a guy with a raw athletic score of a nine point nine point nine eight. Yeah, in the second round because he was a bad interview. Yeah, yeah. like come on, man! Nah, like just he was the better Texas receiver in my opinion. He 100%. was. He was. I, a, he was a top five receiver in this class. I thought. Fucking. It, but I tell you what, everyone's gonna say it's gonna be Xavier Worthy because he's gonna fit in KC, and that's, that's the problem. Scary and fucking it, Buffalo, dude. When are they gonna learn? Yeah, right. And I what thought Colton learn? was a good pick for Buffalo. Yeah. It Why not col- just take him there? I know. They got dude, a pick swap. They didn't even get a pick. And so then maybe we get lucky and San Fran takes fucking Xavier Worthy in case he doesn't get him. Yeah, maybe Baltimore. Purdy's not reaching him. Yeah. No, my my only thing with that was like I just thought they the Colts got they draft on athletics and they got two of the most athletic guys yeah. at at underrated value where they like Latu probably shouldn't have been there in any other draft Latu's not there that yeah. like, AD's not there at any other time in the the offensive tackle that they got can play three different positions mm-hmm. and he was swearing up a storm on the phone with the Colts I don't know if you heard that call <laughs> oh yeah 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 he's like, oh he's like I'm a Colt let's go Colts <laughs> <laughs> so, like I think you're gonna fit in I not to be biased I thought they had the best high value draft through the first three rounds like they got two guys who could be immediate impacts at places that they shouldn't have been okay and i i value that as an organization i like that i'm gonna argue philly because i think oh, quinian sure. mitchell getting going where he went cooper de going in the second round Bastard somehow dude second like yeah, right. insane so insane Luke, dude. Juan was talking about this like but right before you had got here and and i said I, the reason why I'm not crazy with Philly is because I feel like every single year we always rave about the draft that they had. And, and you know, we were talking crazy about Kelly Ringo and, and you know, Nolan Smith, and, and they weren't like anything crazy last year. But I said to his point that them being third or fourth or maybe even fifth guys in that defensive back room, knowing that, that Slay, Bradbury, and Gardner Johnson is still there, I feel like might make it like a little bit different. Yeah, it's going to come down to coaching for me. This is the Sirianna year. It's like, dude, you're either a good coach or you're not. Yeah. It, it, it can't, players can't do it on their own anymore. You need someone to keep them in line. Yeah. Like, that's the thing is these are all high-paid young men who just like to screw around. 
You know what I mean? You get A.J. Brown complaining on the sidelines about God knows what. Jalen yeah. Hurts is trying to keep it all together himself. Sirianni's crying on the sidelines screaming yeah. like a five-year-old. And yeah. I like him. I'm a huge Sirianni guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this is, that's what it comes down to. Because if they're not well coached, Steve, you could put those dra- draft picks in the trash. Absolutely. That's what happens. Tuan, last impressions in the draft and anything else that you'd like to share here as we're wrapping it up? We talked about it in the middle. I really think Jared Verse was the seal of the draft, though. Yeah. If I'm going to be yeah. honest, like, as far as the number one pick, like I, I really like – Minnesota trading up for Dallas Turner too, and I'd like to give more love to the offensive side of the ball, but the draft just fucking did that for everyone. So yeah, yeah. one expectations <laughs> like, for those two dudes. Jared Verse, I want to see ten plus sacks, and I think he can get it. I think that's kind of low, honestly. I, just, I think I know for a rookie, like you don't want to put too high expect. I think he can push like 12, 13. I also feel like the Rams are going to be the kind of team that's like we're not going to just throw him into the fire right away. No. Like he's going to get reps in the beginning of the season, but I think they're going to dole the reps down until they go. All right, he's ready to go. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I, I like to say ten and a half, ten sacks, something like that. Five tackles, five tackles for loss. I I don't know. I don't know what to think for tackles for loss. Yeah, I do think okay. he because he does play really well the run. Mm-hmm. And Bill Belichick said this fucking perfectly. The reason he's so good in the pass rush is because he's so good at stopping the run. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when you're worrying about trying to push him backwards, he's just right by it. Right yeah. by it. Right by it. What about Dallas Turner? I think he's in such a good scenario. And I think Flores is still there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So does I think he get more sacks than Burris. Yes. Yeah, because I think yeah, I think Minnesota play will play more. him right away. Yep, play exactly. More. I think right away he's going in there because I think LA can get more out of less talented players than I think Minnesota can on the defensive side specifically. Mm-hmm. Even with flow there. Even with flow, I just I mean, dude, every year I'm like, the Minnesota's defense needs to be better. Oh, they have Flores, it'll be better. Fuck it wasn't. Just every year. Yeah. It's just it's never gets better. I think Jared Verse is one of that elite pass one of the elite pass rushers they can have. And they're filling a major hole by losing to Neil Hunter. I feel yeah. this. I absolutely agree. Scumbag went somewhere else. <laughs> I know. And that's all, and then top top six criminal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is he? I think there was something. Well, maybe maybe off the air. All right. I didn't, before I didn't he know. finds me and kills me. <laughs> so this was our draft grades coming to you guys this week. I was really excited to understand, you know, where all these guys, you know, really fit and how this is starting to shape the 2024 NFL season. Most improved teams, power rankings, all coming real soon with some NFL trivia and a lot more sprinkled in. How'd it feel to be in the, the new look studios in SDSB? Comfy. Yeah? Comfy. Oh, this is great. Yeah. I've lounged the whole, you're going to see the whole, it's just me readjusting to go up. Yeah. And I get up here. <laughs> get deep and then up. I'm fucking Yeah. Up. Yeah. I'm going to have to sit in this more so my, my feet get closer to the ground, but yeah. that's, that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. It's the only complaint I have. <laughs> Well, Got we're really excited. <laughs> yeah, sink it right in. Get, get the nice little butt print right Yeah, in. right. Kev can sit over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're really excited to share this with you guys. Hopefully you guys like the new setup and, you know, the way we broke down the draft. You guys know the deal. Peace, love, five stars, nothing less.